On February 25th, 1957, a boy's body was found wrapped in a blanket in a box. The discovery was made in the woods in Fox Chase, Philadelphia. An autopsy revealed that a boy passed away due to blunt force trauma. It was estimated that he was between 4 and 6 years old. He was described as a Caucasian boy that stood at 40 inches tall. He had surgical scars on his ankle and groin. There was also a L-shaped scar under his chin. It appeared as if he had recently had a haircut, as there were some clumps of hair in the box. A young man made a discovery of the boy when he was checking his traps. He feared that the police would confiscate his traps, so he did not tell anyone what he found. A few days later, another young man saw a rabbit running into the woods. He followed it and then came across the body of the boy. He did not want to contact the police, as he felt that he would be a suspect in the case. He did contact them, however, a day after he made the discovery. Investigators took fingerprints from the boy in a the box. They believed that they would be able to identify him quickly, but that was not the case. They found no matches for the fingerprints, and no one came forward with any useful information. Close to the crime scene, a man's blue cap was found, as well as a child's scarf and a man's white handkerchief. All of his clues would lead nowhere. The case soon became known as the boy in the box and America's unknown child. It attracted a lot of media attention. Investigators also looked at a box for any clues. They discovered that it once contained a bassinet sold by J.C. Penny. They were unable to find the owner of the box. The same could be said for the blanket that a boy was found in. As you can imagine, there are a lot of theories regarding this case. We'll only be discussing a few. A man by the name of Remington Bristow spent thousands of hours investigating this case. He found a foster home that was located approximately one and a half miles from the site of the body. Remington attended an estate sale at a foster home. There he found a bassinet similar to the one made by J.C. Penny. He also found blankets on a clothesline that were similar to the one in which the boy's body had been wrapped in. Remington believed that the boy belonged to the stepdaughter of the man who owned the foster home. Investigators did question the foster family but were not able to find definite links between them and the boy in the box. In 2002, a woman, who we only know as Martha or M, came forward and told investigators an incredible story. She said that her mother purchased a boy from his biological parents in the summer of 1954. The boy was subjected to extreme physical abuse for two and a half years. One evening at dinner, the boy vomited up his meal of baked beans and was given a severe beating. His head was slammed against the floor. The boy was then given a bath and during which he passed away. Martha's mother then cut the boy's long hair to conceal his identity. The two women then dumped his body in a fox chase area. The details I was given matched information known only to investigators. There was baked beans in a boy's stomach and his fingers were water wrinkled. Investigators were unable to verify her story. The boy in the box was buried at Ivy Hill Cemetery in Cedar Brook, Philadelphia. His headstone has the words America's unknown child on it. People often decorate it with flowers and stuffed animals. The case has been featured on a lot of different shows, such as America's Most Wanted, Cold Case, CSI Crime Scene Investigation, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. The Ghoul Boys also featured it on season 2 of BuzzFeed Unsolved in 2017. All hail the Watcher. In 2016, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children released a forensic facial reconstruction of the boy. In 2019, the boy's remains were exhumed. They were able to retrieve DNA that was sent to a lab in Europe. In 2021, it allowed them to create a DNA profile. A lot of DNA companies are now working to find family members 
of the boy using genetic genealogy so they can identify him. On May 25, 1981, the body of a woman was found at a low river crossing in Pulaski County, Missouri. An autopsy revealed that a woman had been strangled. It was determined that she was Caucasian and had dark hair. It was estimated that she was anywhere from 25 to 40 years old. She was named the Pulaski County Jendo and were buried at a Waynesville Cemetery. Investigators followed a lot of leads, but it all led nowhere and the case would go cold for many years. In 2015, her remains were exhumed in hopes of getting DNA evidence from her body. In April 2019, the DNA Doe project got involved. They then tried to find relatives of the victim using her DNA. In December 2019, they reached a man in Alexandria, Virginia, who they believed was the brother of the victim. He said that he did have a sister that a family had lost contact with in the early 1980s. He gave them his DNA sample. The DNA analysis of the two samples found that a man and a victim were 19.4 million times more likely to be biological siblings than not being related. This now meant that Pulaski County Jendo was finally identified as Karen K. Knippers on the 25th of May 2021. She was identified exactly 40 years after her body was found to the day. An investigation to find a person who took Karen's life is still ongoing. Anyone with information is asked to call Pulaski County Sheriff's Detective DJ Reno at his number. It is known that Karen was 32 years old when her life was taken and that she was reported missing from St. Louis, Missouri.